Hi everyone, this is Grace and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to learn how to decorate this adorable pumpkin spice latte set. So first up is this sweater pumpkin. This concept of a sweater pumpkin has taken the cookie world by storm since last year. It is super adorable and I love it and I'm <laughs> glad to be doing it on this cookie. Um, so first up, I am flooding in sections with a single consistency. I alternate with pumpkins in particular about whether I'd rather do two consistencies or one consistency. Typically, I prefer to do one if I can on a pumpkin. So this just means that it is a thicker flood than what you might use for two consistencies. I flood that first section. I allow it to crust, which is about 15 minutes in the dehydrator. I'd say somewhere between 15 to 30 minutes if you're just using a fan at minimum. And I allow that to crust so that when I go and flood the other sections, then there's definition in between the sections and that's the technique of flooding in sections. It's really important when you're flooding in sections how you approach the seam in, and the connecting of the two different sections. It does take a little bit of an art to get a nice clean seam like you can see that I've done there and there are two different ways that you can do that. Let's see what I've done with this cookie. Yes, so I'm doing the outline approach. So I'm getting the clean seam by doing an outline pipe first. And then now I'm doing the greater pressure on the bag to get the real flood in there. And I'm flooding up against that outline I've created, not against the seam the the other section itself and that's going to get me the cleanest seam if you have to use a scribe make sure that you're staying about a couple millimeters away from that seam i had to get up close there because i missed a little spot so i've let those sections get a pretty decent crust i'm going to be piping on top so i want to make sure that it's not going to cave in on me because there isn't enough crust to hold up the weight of what I'm piping on top of it. And here I am starting with just piping some simple lines. Important thing here when piping lines is to make sure that you pull up on the bag from the surface of the cookie so that you get a nice clean line and it's typically anywhere from maybe a quarter of an inch to half an inch. So here I'm doing the sweater technique as it's called. <laughs> um, this is pressure piping which means I am varying the pressure on my bag. So I'm applying a lot of pressure for that initial bead and then as I pull away, I'm simultaneously releasing pressure. Pressure piping is definitely a hard technique to kind of grasp. Probably the biggest thing to keep in mind is that it does require a lot of pressure at the beginning of that. I think a lot of beginners in particular are really scared of how much pressure to apply on the piping bag. And yes, piping bags can explode, especially tipless piping bags because they are a thinner plastic, but it takes a very steel hand um, and some thick icing to pop a bag. But you live, you learn if you pop a bag. I have certainly popped my share of bags in my day. So here I just, you'll see there was a transition there because after I finished piping, I decided that it needed a little more detail. So I'm adding a couple of extra lines that I hadn't originally planned on. And that's okay, that happens sometimes. My designs are exactly as I had imagined and sometimes I go with the flow and I discover something that I like even better. So the last thing to do is to pipe the stem and I'm using, looks like a medium peak here, piping consistency. And that is the sweater pumpkin, my friends. 
Up next, we have what I'm calling the pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> so first I have outlined in piping consistency, let that dry. And now I am flooding to do the wet on wet. Um, this is one way to flood when you're doing wet on wet. You wanna make sure that you are under flooding for wet on wet because you're gonna be adding more icing to that surface. And the more icing you add, the more likely that it could over flood. Um, this is an, actually an older cookie that I did and I now flood I'm able to flood all the way to the edge still and know how much to under flood, but this is a great way to know for sure that you're under flooding because I didn't flood all the way to the edge. And here I'm leaving in these transitions. I normally take these out, but for giggles and so you can see real life, um, do yourselves a favor when you're filming and make sure that you have all of your supplies on the side of your dominant hand so you don't have to cross the camera to get the other bags of icing but i digress so this is wet on wet i'm using flood consistency for all of this wet on wet means i'm applying wet icing to wet icing and it will sink into each other and create this beautiful flat surface i'm using a scribe here to pull through this is a very classic wet on wet design where you pipe lines and then you pull through. I'm choosing to do a continuous pull here, but you can also pull down, clean off your scribe, pull up, clean off your scribe. It's just a bit of a different look. And here I am using somewhere between a medium and I would say a stiff peak piping consistency to pipe the icing, um, pipe the whipped cream, excuse me. And yes, this is all royal icing. And I'm using sprinkles here just for a little extra something something. The thicker the icing, the faster you need to apply those sprinkles because thicker icing is going to crust faster. And if it has already crusted, these sprinkles will unfortunately not stick to the whipped cream. Sad day. So here, this is a medium peak piping consistency to pipe this little pumpkin on here. Um, I could have gone through with a scribe and helped this to settle out more. Certainly an option. I typically don't have the patience for that, so I don't. Um, but there we go. That is the cute pumpkin spice latte. Up next, we have this simple white pumpkin to just round out the set. I'm doing the same technique that I did with the orange pumpkin where I am using a one consistency to outline and flood alternating sections for the flooding in sections technique. I'm doing just a very simple design here so that I can get some definition in between the sections. This is definitely my favorite way to pipe a pumpkin. I like to do five sections, one consistency, alternating so that I can get the definition in between the two. So I let those sections crust and now I'm moving in to pipe the remaining sections. And I just do a lot of pressure on my hand right here and squeeze that out. <laughs> it's a lot of icing that I'm pushing out, but I think that gets the cleanest look on these remaining sections. So I allow these sections to crust and now I am just piping on some detail lines. I'm using a flood consistency here just because I didn't have a piping consistency for my white, but to be honest, piping consistency would have been a little cleaner, uh, but this is good enough and I still like it. And last up, I'm just going to pipe the stem the same way that I did with the larger orange pumpkin. And that is the simple white pumpkin to go on our set. And that is the entire set, my friend. Just three cookies. That's really all you need for a set. You don't need eight. Three is good. So I hope you enjoy making this set.